A warm welcome to all our viewers to our series, Natural Medicine. In an old Celtic place of power, Mrs. Adele Duttweiler, the wife of the Migros founder, founded, built and financed a naturopathic clinic due to her gratitude from her recovery. That was the Paracelsus Clinic and today it's called Swiss Mountain Clinic. And the lady, who is the director nowadays, is here again today. A warm welcome, dear Dr. Petra Vico. Thank you. One of your guiding principles is healing needs truth. And how deep this really is. This quote, that's what I want to talk about. I understand very well what you mean, but many patients or people who are suffering do not want to see, or rather leave it on the outside, than take responsibility. And how do you see it when patients come to you? How do you manage that they take it as their responsibility? I don't think it is not just that they don't want to, they just don't know. And I think medically we have made a fantastic development. But the view of the doctor which has to be like a universe, and also enter in depth, it became microscopically tiny. And because of that, a patient can't even recognise these possibilities, why they became sick in the first place. Let me explain it with an example. Sometimes I am very concerned how few people know who develop dementia, who develop neurodegenerative diseases like MS, like Parkinson's, and they know nothing about themselves. And the phrase healing needs truth is also the wish to look at my life. We are dependent on our life cycle. We are dependent on how our life is designed it's worlds in between where we live, what contamination we can carry, what we are equipped with, how we are supplied hormonally. And all of that is so important. At the latest, when we are confronted with a diagnosis, and of course, at the earliest, when we maybe don't feel anything yet, but just want to know, is my feeling right, that I feel really well? Or is there a part of my body that is not well and needs help? So I think this phrase, healing needs truth, is also an aspect that has to clarify to me what is my weakness. And all of us have one, I'm afraid. We all have a weakness somewhere in our body. And it is there where an illness will appear. And I think it is our medical duty to recognise this and not only observe the fact to divine a disease and name it. And this sword of Damocles often hangs over people and they are in a state of shock. Let's think about patients. Of 1,000 patients who are having a mammography, there are 100 with an indication which is negative in 99% of cases but they are in fear for weeks. So we get one out of a thousand, so it is officially clear, this is not a preventative measure, even though it might be precious for this one patient, but even there, we are already a bit late. But I believe there is also the other one. You find one, but you also create one. Yes. Nowadays, the devices are so good that we can even see these microtumors yet that are not even classified as tumors. So officially, this measure is really not the number one in tumour prevention in Switzerland. There are clear studies, but what I want to say is that every tumour needs, of course, a base. And what we know today about what has to happen in our body, that it gets to that, it is not fair that just because we don't see anything today, it slowly gets prepared. It takes 10 years. And my view on the human organism always goes into the direction that I want to recognise where are the weaknesses and what can be done to strengthen them beforehand so that I can prevent a development. 
I don't know if you know the rate for tumour development today. The percentage of people who can expect such a diagnosis during their lives. I'm not sure, but I think for prostate cancer for men over 50 years, it's 30%. No, no, no. 53% and women 41. So it sometimes takes my breath away if we only ever invest in how we can get rid of it in the best way. We rather have to engage in what has happened. And we have to invest our energy in proper caring. And not just looking, not seeing anything, looking, not seeing anything. And then finally still let the people walk straight into it. I'm thinking about the word epigenetics now. That the milieu is everything and that is happening at the weakest point. It's like that. It's just like that. And also the mental load plays a role there. Because my perception for life always changes my body's chemistry. And it is very difficult if you're all night outside in the rain, but are in love and cuddling. You will never get sick like this. But with a high mental load that is dragging you down, you just need to get cold once and you have the biggest virus flu for a few weeks because illness is always a process that develops from inside. That's something that I admire you for, that you always consider the emotional part that really makes a person sick because this is not such a topic in academic medicine, is it? No, it is not a topic, and if it is a topic, they will send you to a psychologist, but we just have to know that the body's capacity to compensate, to tolerate things, is indefinitely high if everything is in order, and we have talked about this autonomy before. It is the so-called vegetative nerve system, which controls everything unknowingly and adapts automatically. By the way, it is up here. It is the limbic system. It is the oldest part of the brain and it adapts sensitively to the everyday needs that I have. And as part of a mental load, it has to store a lot of stress and it regulates an upward cascade that was used to be connected in evolution with flight to invest the energy to avoid this danger. And then many important processes will be regulated downwards. Like the two of us are sitting here in our indefinite gratitude and luck to conduct this interview. Everything is in balance here. But if it was a very difficult situation, it just happened recently. I had a patient that had lost her cat and the cat meant everything to her. That cat was run over by a car and for her, it was like losing a loved one. And 14 days later, at a restaurant, her husband collapses before her eyes. He didn't die, he just had a circulatory collapse, but it was the second conflict of loss for seconds. So two days later, she had the shingles all over her face. This is a virus, this varicella virus or herpes zoster virus that rests in the spinal cord. And through a lack of immunity, because shock lowers the immune capacity, I have to leave. There is fear. I have to go. And then the virus gets reactivated and I have shingles. And these are mechanisms in times of conflict in tough times, we have to be mindful that we also worry about clarifying situations in life. Letting go is one of the hardest tasks for people. But still, it is important that we are able to manoeuvre out of a situation that makes us vulnerable for diseases. I just had a small vision in my head, and now that it is there, I have to say it. What would you think about if we asked our viewers if they are having a problem and would like to talk to you, to send their story to us by mail, and we would periodically make an episode about it and, and discuss these cases? I would like that. So you'd be basically discussing the case directly with the viewer. Then 
we could essentially show your view on the truth of a story. So that the viewer at home can see, yes, that is also true for me. That is a beautiful project and it makes me think of something else. In the next couple of weeks, we will have a six-year-old child in the clinic. I picked this child out of five cases and we will finance the child's stay in the clinic. And we will also then publish the case because the documentation of the file of this six-year-old child showed me what the family doesn't know about this juvenile illness. They don't know many things and so much is possible there. So much is possible. You're an encyclopedia. Yes, but what I just want to say is it is a beautiful thought and it is not necessary to say the viewer's name and address. They just have to tell us their case and through the experience and also, I think, the recognition of things, what has happened, how it, is it connected. Many, many more people can benefit from this. It is a beautiful thought. Yes, I'm in. The series could be called Healing Needs Truth. Healing Needs Truth and medical advice from a holistic point of view because I also slowly started to develop the clinic for second opinions. So I really like it when people come with a diagnosis that shatters them completely, pulls a rug out from under them and they get advice according to the book, which... I have to say, after 25 years of experience, respect, lower your weapons and take the time to ask, why am I confronted with this diagnosis? What happened to me? Without taking the severity out of it, but maybe because it is so big, it needs a concept that looks at the whole and not just at something that I think has to be destroyed with heavy machinery but what happened inside me and what things have failed me that my body had the attention to maybe not prevent this tumour development because you and I, every day, these mutations get created, these changes. On top of that, Miss Tamara Liberdua was in the clinic with me just in February. It was all present for my 60th birthday and I love to meet people that never received gratitude from medicine. And Miss Lebedoa already discovered 30 years ago that parasites have the same tumour metabolism and what they have in common. And hundreds of cases were published. And today we know so much, but we don't know the beginning of it to decide the right way for a person. Then we are where we are today. This development, and we said at the beginning of the talk, that more and more people have tumour diseases and it's not the solution to have the best chemotherapy. These statistics are shocking, aren't they? I think they speak their own language and it is a big need for me because often when people are in fear, they think they have to react very quickly and eventually the disease took at least 10 years before we noticed it. Yes, I just had that last week, a, a call from a lady that got a diagnosis and was told to have surgery in two days. Right away, and she called desperately. I said, I'm not a doctor, sorry, but why don't you look calmly for a second opinion? Yes, that is nice, isn't it? Yeah, sure. It is important. Calm down this fear and panic. I also heard that a, a tumour takes many years until it reaches a tumour size. Like I said, it takes at least 10 years to develop. And then it has to be gone the next day. This really is... There's no harm in waiting a bit more. Yes, that is out of the question, out of the question. But what are we not talking about? All the things that happened that it got there. And it is out of the question that a tumour relief is precious too if the tumour has a certain size... But there are so many people that look back and say, I'm so grateful that these things have developed. I learned so much now and have noticed so much for me now. Where is my unconscious course of action in the months, years? And I have to solve this problem or, or we can see all the toxic contamination 
or the transmitter has been in front of my door since then, and so on and so on and so on. So there is a lot. And if people are ready and open, and I am, of course, exceptionally gifted in this clinic because the people come now. The 20 years before, I have always released so much energy. But quite often the clientele was overburdened with that. And then the small village doctor is always the lowest in the hierarchy. The experts are above you. But human strength does not grow from power, but from the resistance going your own way. And that was really good. This way and now you're on top of the hierarchy. Exactly. So now I have a different acceptance. And that makes me very happy because I can see and observe so much now. That's why I can proudly say it. And I have read a book six or eight years ago, which is called Parkinson's Healing Without Chemicals. It was written by a patient and I called him and I didn't realise that it was just released four weeks ago or so earlier. And Mr Pogel was so touched that I, as a doctor, called him and thanked him because he is an ambassador for me. And when I read the book, I said, but this is our work. He could have had it so easy, straight to the point, but he went his way and visited 40 therapists. And then in the same year, there was the first neuro naturopathic congress here in Switzerland, in Winter Tour, and there he spoke on Saturday. So that's when we met the first time and I spoke on Sunday. And when I was finished speaking, I asked him to come on stage and made an honorific speech. And since then, he comes to the clinic twice a year and then everyone with a Parkinson's diagnosis has to come. And I try to tell them he is someone who knows what he's talking about. And Mr Pogel fell thousands of times and got up thousands of times and went his way. And after seven years, his Parkinson's was history. And Parkinson's is a disease where we say today, there is nothing to be done. It is neurodegeneration. That is not correct, because if we look at the cause and causality, I have to say, there are not many people that believe in themselves. But they hear it as well, nothing can be done. Please get used to it. The prognosis in this direction is set. So I have to say, it is these special people, and we need many more pogles, we need many more people. Many more vehicles. Well, I don't want to say that, but it is just... That's why healing needs truth. You will not be able to force your body. It doesn't want to be trimmed. It doesn't want to be stressed. It wants to be led. And if you lead it, it also needs time to regenerate. We say today that after seven years, nothing is what it was before, but you have to stick to it. And you can't believe that just by changing your diet for half a year, it'll all come back. I am not God. I am the smallest doctor of this world, but I can see why your body can't do it anymore and where it needs help, and I do that. But you have to do the work, and that I found so fantastic. He is carried by his wife, and he just did it. And the reflection, the sincerity to his life, an architect, like to have a wine at night, microwave, walk the dog in the night, lack of sleep, stress... He reflects it with so much gratitude that his body told him, let's put an end, my friend. I won't be able to make it. And today he's healthy. And it is always a special experience for me to see these two people that are so grateful that this phase of their lives gave them so much to do that they will also help other people. You get to know life more in depth. I've read a quote before, and I, I think it fits well, that an illness is actually the most reasonable and most thankful response of our body. It is just like that, and it's always just like I said. The body's process to try to become healthy. I think doctors should be trained in body language and symptoms. I love the author Hans Kupper, who said illness is a symptom of life gone astray. He restricts the topic of wrong movement because only slow life or speed finds the way back. 
the body refuses more superficiality and forces the life in depth. And this is so deep, nobody leaves the clinic without this phrase. You can't expect to be healthy tomorrow if you don't start with you and allow for this process. And in the whole milieu... Of course, end the line, milieu. If we make these dark fields, for example, we look into the living milieu. If we make bioterrain assessments, we see how can the acid-base balance be in balance on all levels? And there are worlds between a stomach pH value of 1.4 and the small intestine of 8.5, but the body is prioritising. And if you think that you can take gastroprotective medication for years without any repercussions, then I would say that is quite naive. You destroy everything. Because you only have a chance to protect your bowel from parasites, and that is the gastric acid. And people buy pantazole like at the supermarket. It is comfortable, it is easy. And they go in a direction where I say, we don't have to be surprised that all these things have an intense increase of gastrointestinal diseases. I don't even want to say the word. I would actually like to find different words for tumour and cancer, which put it on a healthier base from the beginning instead. Like today that we are in fear and panic, because in the beginning so much is possible. But we can't start to think about it only when we destroyed everything else as well. Yes, this word is really only connected to fear and shock and death, isn't it? It is. And there's also this so-called scientifically documented nocebo effect. Oh, by the way, a clinic in Geneva is training their staff in this regard that they won't subconsciously cause the nocebo effect. Wonderful. Unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable which way it goes in medicine. So nice, yes. And we also don't have to... I think we shouldn't judge or criticise, we just have to observe what happened quietly. Maybe we wouldn't even be that far in medicine today if we hadn't neglected all the other things, I don't know. But it is time now to rethink. And there was a nice project a few years ago in Baal. Somebody really stuck up for new students in their first year of university. There was a small group that had different offers, for example, complementary medicine. That was great. So for two, three years, I could give students a different point of view to medicine and had to enthuse them in two, three days. And some of them also did an internship with us already. But it needs this university acknowledgement that we can broaden the view of the doctors of tomorrow because it is not just the patient. We also need the doctors. We need the depth and we need the acceptance. If you look through an electron microscope, you don't see the cell with the mitochondria. You see the resonance. You see the atoms. You see the oscillation. So it is all about resonance, oscillation. We know epigenetically that once a positive suggestion does more on a cellular level than some kind of chemicals. And I believe that this is what is exciting in this time. The acceptance increases and that we are integrating these things. And the first thing is that the patient, of course, is actively looking ahead and is not thinking that there is no chance anyway. So there's no point in trying. Can I ask one last question? If there's someone at home and says, I realise I have to find out the truth, and let's say they would come to you to the Swiss Mountain Clinic, how much time would a patient need to recognise the truth for themselves with the help of you, the experts? And to get onto the right path, is it one week or two? Well, so let's say for a disease that has already reached a certain process, for that, if I am willing to change something, I also have to invest a bit of time. For that, I would say no less than 14 days because I have to build a foundation. You can't build your house on a small platform. You need a good foundation and this needs you doing it. 
I have to go on a path with you where you understand. So I also have to help there. So 14 days is good for that. But don't have the demand to be therapeutically helpful because this can then only be done in the second week. Limited, I can begin to do it. But what is important for me is that they know for the future what they need to change and this can be done. If I come with something where I say, I actually just want to know it, actually I'm quite fine, I just want to know what is important for me in the future, then one week is sufficient. Thank you so much. And I'm sure that if Mrs Adele Duttweiler was watching today and saw how her back then finance clinic developed, then she would be very proud. And thank you so much that you took over the heritage and are carrying it forward. And at this point also, thank you to Miglo, that they also supported it, that this wonderful clinic exists here in Switzerland today that looks at things in a holistic way. So all the best to you. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>